What up, everybody? It's the usual cruel. Cr fuck! Why do I fuck that guy? Keep, keep it up? in. Keep it in. You have God to. damn it! <laughs> yeah, no, this is the intro. Cold open. I love it. <laughs> keep fucking up that fucking word. It's the usual crew doing what we always fucking do. I, I, That's okay. That's crew. super fucking corny, dude. Fucking crew. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love it. <laughs> God, fuck. Super fucks yeah. corny. Yeah, fucking hell. Just leave it in. Let's go. Yeah, dude, leave it. I love it. Oh man, what up everyone? It's us doing what the fuck we do, fucking shit up, not being on fucking point, and uh, you guys love us for it, so here we go. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> you should have stopped at and the, the first opening. And the dismount was even worse. Yeah, yeah dude, you should have stopped at the first fuck up. <laughs> well, welcome to your sloppy seconds of a fucking goddamn God. <laughs> It's like, all right, we fucking stream, we talk all the time, but it's like, all right, everybody shut up, I have to focus for a second, and brain just goes left, right, left, left. Uh, yeah. Check. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. So, yeah, that's our, uh, that's our intro. Still a better one than when Corndog just fucking, like, yelled at his mic for a second. What the, the... <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> fucking stupid shit. Yeah, that's, that's, that was definitely the worst. That's the one the guy commented on. Was it? No, it was the one after that, I think. When he was very nice. That comment got deleted, by the way. I think. I know it's some horse shit. Wait, dude. Probably because, uh, yeah, the one where he's like, he was like, oh, oh, uh, you guys make great content. content you deserve. It was a bot. I was like, oh, thanks. And the bots out here throwing us a bone. That's cool. Yeah, and I saw that he had like four hundred thousand subscribers. I'm be like, fucking send him, douche. <laughs> Decided not to. <laughs> Turns out it wasn't a bot. He got banned for other reasons, and we just lost yeah. the follower. It's like, well, corn dog does not represent what the rest of us feel. Uh, holy fuck! News. Uh, no, no, I want to. I want to hear about uh, the oh, boom about that basketball shit. Oh yeah, so um, there's a ten part documentary that came out from ESPN, and they're releasing it in like two episode installments over the next five weeks and it's about um the 1998 bulls they let unrestricted access to a to their last season with phil jackson um and they let ca the camera crew go every fucking where and it's been um supposedly unreleased until now um so there's like a lot of inside things that you see within like practices and I love documentaries, dude, and I love sports documentaries. So it's like you just gave a fucking a crackhead like crack? a ten or f like five weeks of crack, pretty much. It's like and they, like the way that they piece together the like fl like the flashbacks, <laughs> like from oh, what's funny, man? It's just the analogy guy. I don't know. Yeah, it's a lot of crack, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot yeah, of crack, I bro. Mean, I couldn't know because I started thinking: is this five weeks in one shot? Is this five weeks? <laughs> Peace out. Yeah. Okay. Like, is, this a, is this a okay. five piece California key? <laughs> so you get a fix every week. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. I mean, if they would have put it on fucking on Netflix, I would have been done with it already. I would have been finished in the first day. So it's like uh, an hour each episode. And then like each specific episode touches on a specific player or like a specific turning point into like the 1990s the 90s bulls as like the the dynasty that they were um and i just feel like the the way that they're piecing together all the flashbacks and like how all of the information and all the footage that they had it's like super dope because like the only thing that i have like as far as like vivid memories of the time was just like the news fucking talking about dennis rodman pretty much every day but it's like it's really cool to like see what was going on and see like how everything kind of played out as this like fairy tale basketball story or whatever from them getting like destroyed by the Pistons for three years and then they come back and then they have like a dynasty for pretty much what was the only good Bulls team that we've had that it has actually been successful. Um, and it's kind of reminding me of like the, the best 2K game that came out, which even though I understand that's not everybody's cup of tea, but for people that like because like, i <clears throat> there was a time where i bought 2k every year and we had like fantasy drafts we did like um created characters we'd play online like almost daily um and 2k 11 was the greatest 2k like in franchise history um and that's when michael jordan that was like the first video game that he was a part of as like 
not only the face of the cover, but actually in. It's like I was looking at like other videos and even when he was in, in on an active roster for the Bulls, instead of like having his character, it would just say player and then it would have the number 23 on the jersey. Like he didn't allow any video game to use his likeness. So when he allowed 2K to use his likeness, they went like crazy. They put all of, or like, I think it was 10 or 11 really pivotal, pivotal moments in his career. And you have to go through and play them as Michael Jordan. You have to do like specific tasks, like within the game or like within certain quarters. And I, I thought I kept the copy, but I actually bought another copy so I could play it on stream. Cause it was like that. I want to kind of like play through all those things as they're happening. Cause it's like, it's super cool to watch it. But is that something you're going to be allowed to do? Um, what do you mean? Like, uh, like, like you bought, you bought what the, the, the DVD or the Blu-ray? No, I have a, I have my 360. So, oh, so I, I bought it for 360. So when you said do it on stream, I like, I could have thought that you were going to like sit there and watch oh. the documentary and stuff like that. Oh, no. No, I wouldn't want to anyways. Fuck those people. I want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's if uh, yeah, I, I would say even if you're not like a, a sports fan, it's super interesting to like realize because like Jordan, he is an icon for me on like another level because I'm into shoe collecting and it's kind of like you had the the best footwear designer and the greatest athlete arguable arguably in sports at the time and they came together and they created this franchise and this huge product that sells like they could drop anything you think of and it'll sell out no matter what and it's kind of cool to see the other side where like you can see the fucking unicorn playing basketball and fucking destroying people at that level for almost 10 years didn't he not want to uh, have a Nike deal? Yeah, he originally wanted to sign with Adidas and like for whatever reason didn't go through and um he signed with Nike at like and there's another good 30 for 30 or ESPN documentary on how he signed to to Nike instead of um Adidas. So since you brought up um like 2K games, I have a question about that. Um since you said you went through a time period where you bought it yearly, were you like looking back at it, uh, any kind of sports game, were you getting actual feature updates every year or were you getting slight graphics boosts with updated rosters? So a little bit of all of the above. So like it was like super nuanced things too that like only fucking nerdy assholes would know. Mm -hmm. So like <laughs> there'd be certain, like they would, there'd be stuff that would be like, like with 2K and it's still like it's my, uh, one of my favorite franchises like throughout like when thinking about all the things that have the greatest memories as far as video games are concerned 2k is on the top of that list because like that's where i have the majority of my friends that um i play video games with like off stream and like off of all of everything with like that i'm doing socially as far as that like, gaming right and there would be like very subtle things that they would change and there would be like one good thing and then they'd fuck up two things and then we'd bitch, bitch, bitch. They'd change the one thing that they fucked up. And then the two things that they did good, they wouldn't do anything to progress with it. So it's like, a, it's kind of like the Call of Duty thing where every year they decide to like make a different change. But sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. As far as graphics are concerned, I could put in 2K16 and it'll look pretty much the same as 2K20, to be honest with you. But that's just because of, I'm sure hardware limitations at this time because the the consoles are a little bit long in the tooth but as far as like um gameplay mechanics super minute and roster updates but it wouldn't be because like i'm like oh yeah fuck the next 2k is coming out it's just like my group of friends in high schools uh, my group of friends in high school are getting the next 2k i gotta get it so we could continue this fuckery that we call uh fantasy league or like whatever you like we would play four games in a row and just like be happy as a clam because it was just like 2k they had it at a certain time where they were just like the only sports game that i wanted to play because like basketball is my favorite sport to watch 
mm-hmm. and like playing it and kind of like um what because like i would go to my friends houses and then we'd watch each other play 2k because it's cool like watching it when it's like you there's a user behind it so like you can see like dumbass plays that or like crazy glitches that the game does and it was just like it was a really good time because it's like everybody was on the same wavelength as far as like playing the game so it's not so much like the game that i like it's just the people that surrounded the game i was really into it gotcha i mean yeah i think that's one of the reasons why certain people kept playing cod because you'd hear it amongst friends like oh man this fucking game is trash i hate this fucking game i'm tired of it but if your circle of friends was getting it, you got a day one with them just so that you can keep up and stay in the in, in the loop. Yeah, so you can be part of the crew. That was yeah. the entire kind of bid with that, right? Yeah, except for, okay, so that that logic was true for everything except for 2K11. Because 2K11, Jordan was in it, dude. Like 2K9, 2K8. Everything, even when I, I think I had uh, Live 2008, which Live is fucking garbage compared to 2K. That's like a different subject for another day. You had to create a Michael Jordan character. And like there, there was little emphasis on like a specific like game mode besides like uh, your fucking run of the mill uh, 1v1. They had like a, a little bit of a team like type game. I think it's called like team up or whatever they had. But that was like where you could go through and they had the majority of the rosters from like that time. And they did like in 2K12 as well, like they would have the specific arenas like the Chicago Stadium doesn't exist anymore. But they they reconstructed that in 2K. And then in one of the modes, like it would even distort your TV. So like you could play one of the games in black and white. Like when you were playing like a 50s or 60s games with like the it was the the Celtics versus the Lakers. So it was like that's when the turning point was just from playing 1v1 or we'll do a fantasy draft to like there's specific game modes that are to this game revolving around basketball and basketball history. I used to get a lot of the Madden games. I think I stopped at 25. Not like the 25th game, just the Madden 25. Yeah. Like the little anniversary one. Madden makes me want to fight people in real life. I don't I liked, like Madden anymore. I liked Game Day better. Cause I liked oh, their, the 2K one? Yeah, I liked their catching system because you had to actually choose how you wanted to catch it. And if you chose the wrong one, your receiver would miss. Blitz was the shit, too. Blitz was funny, man. Blitz was good. And um, NFL Street. NFL Street. NFL Street. Street. NBA Street. NBA Street. Those are fucking off the wall. Just fun. So the new 2K... And this is the last fucking thing I'm talking about, 2K. Um, they kind of have, it's kind of like a street type game, but you're playing with your created character and it's called The Neighborhood. And so there's like, there's courts where you could play pickup games like 2v2, 5v5. Um, and that's like a really good way to rank up your character. And that's like, I enjoy that even more than like when I used to play 2K back in like 2K12, 2K10 like between that era because they took like the PVP aspect of it and they perfected it in my opinion. Cause it's like super fun to just team up with like five of your homies and just destroy like a whole court. And then you can stay on the court as long as you want because you won. And it's just like, it's a super cool aspect. They add to it. Have any of you guys tried out the new, rtx voice uh from nvidia no no No. so basically nvidia came out and they released uh it's supposed to be for rtx cards only but there's a way to install it if you don't have an rtx card it's an ai assisted voice um compressor for your mics so it'll take Hmm. out things like your mechanical keyboard it'll basically hear it while you're talking and once it picks up on it it'll Damping the fuck out of it. Um, a lot of background noise just gets canceled out all of a sudden one, from this like AI algorithm. And the cool feature about it is that it has a feature for other people. So you apply it to your um, your source in. And if you have that one friend that is a cunt and has terrible <laughs> audio quality, it'll fix it for you. They don't have Wait, to install it on, on there. Hold on. They're a cunt just because they have terrible audio? 
audio dude yes. like relax bro. yeah no i'm talking Holy about like shit. we're all sitting around with like a thousand dollar pc you can't buy a fifty dollar oh fucking my God. headset or something that isn't terrible and doesn't sound like a tin Jesus. can that's what i'm getting at here you know oh, you, you no. turn your microphone the wrong way for a couple of months <laughs> <laughs> No, but like, let's say like you have the friend that like his mic is two inches away from the mechanical keyboard and there's nothing he could do about it, right? Um, or it's more so like the webcam. Yeah, uh, it'll try to, it'll it'll do a decent job at filtering out those things so that they don't have to install the software on their end. Uh, it'll automatically do it for you. So I just downloaded it. Um, it I got to like test it. Way too easy. So I'll, I'll probably fuck with it tomorrow for sure. It sounds dope. I have it installed. Uh, I tried it out for a night and it wasn't like, I guess, because my stuff's already like sound treated for the most part. So I didn't really notice much of an issue. Um, but there's a lot of reports oh. that it does have a hit on your game performance because it is running through your card. Your card is the one doing uh, the math. All the additionals. It. Yeah. So it is going to take an additional toll on your cards. Um, I don't have an RTX card, so I was able to install it uh, through the workaround. Um, mm -hmm. but even with RTX cards, the way it's intended, there is some performance hit in game with this current feature, which is fine. Cause this I, was just released. I think as time goes on, it's going to get fixed. But I'm wondering, like, I wonder, cause I have it installed and it said that it's still running in the background, but I have it so that it doesn't remove noise from my microphone. Right. So I, I think if, if you it have it like does. maybe turned off, I'm, I mean, you'll probably have to jump in a task manager and see what's going on with it. It's like that would be really, really helpful for um, for doing like a podcast or if you have like just like in our scenario where we're doing a podcast remotely, um, that'd be really cool to have that uh, to have that working. Oh, yeah, it's not doing anything. I mean, it's taking up 12.4 megabits of the memory. But as far as like CPU um, and GPU usage is not doing anything while I'm having it um, right like not running. You know, like, like this is, this is so far, like everybody has their sound coming in, uh, the way it should be. Um, especially now that corn dog knows front and back. So like we're, we're, we're good <laughs> on sound, but like when you're in a web meeting and you have that one asshole, he turned this uh, thing around on purpose. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I head slapped myself. At the oh, okay. Like when you're in that web meeting and you have that one scumbag that doesn't understand that you need headphones because us coming through the fucking speaker is going to echo through this oh, will dude help. that's my favorite oh, dude God. yeah I mean, that's the best thing uh can you mute yourself mute yourself mute yourself mute yourself mute yourself, mute yourself. i've gotten you know, to the point with like, dude, on, 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 <laughs> on, on. i've literally gotten to the point with like phone calls with customers that they don't listen to me and they'll try to join the call on two different devices and i'll just mute them twice <laughs> so once you figure this out please let me know we can go ahead and continue working here it's the not fucking doing this worst. Shit. Like, you know how a mic works. You talk into it, it picks up sound. It's picking up sound. Your speakers are producing sound. What the fuck? Bullshit. No way. Fucking drives Word? me insane, man. Fuck wild. I don't know, dude. People are fucking stupid. Uh, so why does it? So gearing gearing up, Discord has detected a new audio device named NVIDIA RTX Voice. Do you yep. want to switch to it? You would have to do it through that in order for this. To so work. what it's going to do is it's going to it's going to reroute everything through the RTX drivers, and then those are going to become oh, your output that. and your input. So I don't know how that's going to integrate with your XLR. Oh, not your sorry, your your Go XLR. Um, you'd have to like fuck around and test that. The app has been deleted. <laughs> and remember, that's software based. So like, if you have your Go XLR, you can do all that hardware based, which is obviously going to be the best way to go. Um, but this is supposed to be a really good free alternative um, to that. So hashtag not an ad. Fucking Go XLR has been like, it's been really fucking fun to fuck around with on stream lately. I mean, yesterday was hilarious. Like, <laughs> so I think. Yeah. I need to, so for those of you that don't check us out on stream twitch tv slash the boom bap slash steady hands slash corn smoked corn dog slash big boy brown um we we have like it's one channel that's <laughs> <laughs> one big ass channel uh, multi dot so, stream and just fucking put all those names in there also you if you can check uh check us out through the links in the description shameless plug that have been there for um, about a so, year 
we have certain days where we all play the same games and lately we've been doing valorant and i kind of fucked myself over i think i'm gonna raise like the the price because some dude followed me for two seconds and then he put on uh random uh voice changer uh comms so i think i'm gonna raise that up but i have this new like channel loyalty thing like when you get the the points for viewing the channel um and i have to do communications in pvp shooters with uh with a voice changer voice. On. yeah so I, that got me muted yesterday um and it we couldn't concentrate so i feel like it, it's <laughs> like it people funny. were doing it while i was playing skate today and they were really enjoying it so it seems like a really good thing to have but i think i'm gonna raise like the price you have to pay for it so the funny thing is that was me <laughs> god damn <laughs> Yeah. You so can you could always uh, be, pour yourself off for bits like I did to Corn Dog. I mean, it was just you did like it's it's just funny, dude. Like, but then again, like the dude we were playing with yesterday, I think that's something we can all talk about is the fact like if you're just a super douche while other people are trying to have fun, you're not making it fun for anybody else. Like, I understand competitive nature, yes, but just wait for the fucking rank play to come out. You can't. Oh, before we get into Valorant, because I know we all want to talk about it because it's a great game. I want to touch this uh, this double lift situation real quick because I want to get your thought on it. So I, I talked about how he's like the best bot laner in LCS. And his contract yeah. was up, and he went back to his old team, TSM. Now, the reason people are getting real sketchy about it is that he's dating the president of TSM. And people are saying that that's the only reason he went back. Is that because he's banging the president? Possible. I mean, yeah. He released a video today saying that's bullshit. Like he's been trying to get to TSM for a while now, and then he's been had great relationships with their support and the mid laner. I'm sure he did. And that there's, and there's nothing to do with the president. <laughs> you know, I mean, to be fair, are like make correlations like that, obviously, um, whether yeah. it's true or not, it doesn't matter. Like if he's a really good player and the team gets him, like what's what's the issue? Well, the thing is that he had such a a god awful split. Like, he even got benched, which has never happened to him. People are saying that he tanked his split so he could get his contract up so he could go to TSM. So, you know that people on the internet are really good at doing yoga stretches? That's my thought on this. People like to stretch the fuck out of everything so that they can give a reason to be outraged. Thank you for clarifying that. because that Yeah, I was like, I don't get what he's going for. I I got where he was uh, going on that. Thank you, Steady. Like, when like it looks sketchy... But the dude says nothing to do with it, and I agree that he does have great uh, synergy with the team that's already there. I mean, if you go back and look at his career, he's been trying to get with them for a long fucking time. And he was on TSM and then left, which was a huge mistake on TSM, and now he's going back. And people are like, oh, it's only because he's dating the fucking president. He's like, no, I didn't want to leave in the fucking first place. But don't, to be fair, if your girlfriend or your wife is like the president of something that you're in the field of, like... I don't understand why it would be a problem. Like if you're going back to like being a, a, he's going back to being on that team, but what difference does it fucking make if his wife or girlfriend is the president of like the organization? Now, if they're like doing something as far as like money to where he's getting more, or if he's like, they're doing some weird shit where they're laundering something or they're doing something illegal, then he's going back to a fucking team. What difference does it make? Honestly? Yeah, but even if it is a money thing, we'll say, like, he's getting a better contract or whatever, like, that happens all the fucking time. Yeah. And is, like, I don't know if he's, since you said he's the best, like, wouldn't, like, is he getting a contract to where his skill wouldn't warrant it? Or is, like, I don't don't get, like, the... There's been nothing about, like, how much he's actually getting or how long the contract's for. It's just he's officially signed to TSM. A lot of people were upset because... TSM got a new uh, bot laner this split from Europe, and this was his first split here. And now he doesn't have a team, but he can't go back to Europe because of the pandemic right now. So people are super upset that they kind of like shot him out like that. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, no one could have fucking predicted this was going to be happening. No, when they signed him. Well, like Boom was saying, like I think in general, when people, I mean, it's not just like the internet; it's just people in general. Um. People like to make connections between things and cause drama where there is no real drama. Yeah. Plus, I think that's at an all-time high. We got nothing else to fucking do, dude. True. Like, just sit at home, fucking... 
do some yoga. That's probably like, and I feel like those are the same people that are like in the pyramid schemes and in the fucking 5G gate type fucking Twitter <laughs> sphere. <laughs> fucking idiots. <laughs> so speaking of Riot Games. Thank you, Riot, for listening to our podcast. We appreciate it so much. Thank this you for happens that, giving uh, these drops, man. All of us got drops. I mean, I'm pretty sure they heard our little conversation about Project A. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Appreciate you guys. AKA Valorant. Because yeah. I got my drop when I wasn't even watching anybody at the time. Like it just uh, was in my email. And it's like, all right, cool. You guys know. Bro, I struggled yeah. to get it. Dude, fucking, I think me and Boom spent the most amount of time watching that shit. Almost like nine days, pretty much. Ooh, yeah. That, to it be honest, fucking I'm ridiculous. Because it. it's like, it's a great game to watch. It's not, so it, like, it's giving me, because I used to do game battles for uh, Modern Warfare 2 for Search and Destroy. It's giving me that, like, that vibe like, again. Yeah, like, I need to be good. I want to get wins. And, like, I'm looking at how other people play. I'm, like, trying to take any, because, like, as far as uh, FPS, like, competitive games, I'm console. I'm controller, dude. Like, I could, I could, dis- like, even on Overwatch. I, I do decent in, um, like, cause like at that, like internet cafe, like bar that I go to, um, there was one time I was there playing overwatch, uh, ranked on like some random account that they have there on controller. And I was actually like doing really well. So I feel like that's where my strong suit is. But I, in this game, I want to be good, but I'm at a huge handicap because I don't have um, I don't have the ability yet or like the finesse to get flicks or like to do like really long distance shooting on a keyboard and mouse yet. It's kind of like I'm going through like growing pains because I, I really want to be good at this game. I think the game is in a great state right now and I probably only have a month or two of it feeling like this because it's about to get real, real sweaty when ranked comes out. Dude, I'm it's fucking gonna get, hyped. It's going to get super toxic. Like I'm... I'm expecting it since I've played a lot of league. It's going to get to the point where playing solo isn't going to be fun. I mean, oh, person, I don't feel like solo is fun right now. I don't mind because you still have the no. people that are, that are fun. They're like helpful and they're there to have a good time and they understand that. But there, so, there are sweaties right now. To be fair. So like with a game like this, like say if it was fucking CSGO, if you're just starting CSGO right now. Playing solos will make you better outright because you have to build up that amount of game sense for you to just double check corners, aim like crosshair placement, everything. Like you're starting from the beginning. Granted, comms definitely makes a win, but solos yeah, like and I duos like is going to allow you to do a lot better. A good opportunity for you to start honing in on your level of play, your skills, whatever the case is. And yeah. then when you're playing with other people, it's just like multiplying it uh, by five. That's exactly My big right. thing with a lot of games is I love like map knowledge. That's why I like Siege so much. There was so much shit to learn about every map. And I'm getting that kind of the same feel. Like there's only three maps right now, but there is so much you can do with all these different characters. Like there's not a whole lot. But each of them impact the map in such unique ways. I personally like I I got into the beta and I had no actual interest in it because I, I never had any interest in Overwatch and my aiming is trash in games like CS:GO. Um, but playing it like just the combination of those two, you don't have to be the uh, best aimer. You can fucking like adding those powers really changes up how you tackle certain things. Um, mm-hmm. And I've been having a lot of fucking fun playing it. Dude, this is one of those games, like, I was hyped for when we got the initial bit of information about it. Playing it makes it so much better. Holy shit. It's, like, scaring me. I'm fucking obsessed. Like, I'm watching videos on... uh... By the way, shout out to Corndog for the... Well, not the suggestion, I just copied his crosshair. And it's been working out a lot better. The the single dot? Yeah, the single dot. That was actually, this is something that we kind of talked about before. I didn't mention them. Like, we're like, we want guests and whatnot. A uh, friend, Mesh, that I used to work with, you know, a supervisor, that was his crosshair in H1Z1. And I started using it. And I was like, this is the shit. It's just a dot. Like, you don't have the fucking distraction of all the fucking lines going as you shoot. It's like you're, you're focusing on a dot, put it on their head. And when it's not on the head, you adjust it. 
That's it. That, you don't have to worry about Bloom or nothing. So yesterday I was fucking garbage. So I readjusted <laughs> the uh dude, that was bad yesterday. It was like upsetting. And um I adjusted the the crosshair to just a little dot. Um and I had needed one last game yesterday because I was depressed after playing yesterday. And I actually the little dot, it was helping me instead of like doing like a spray like a uh, suppressed shot like deep like in a deep situation um i was just moving the reticle so that the dot was at least on their body or close to their head and i was i was getting kills instead of just like fucking freaking out because like the little dots are going everywhere and i'm just trying to like adjust micro adjust micro adjust micro adjust to get it on the body uh that little dot just as long as it's somewhere in the vicinity i'm good it, it takes that panic effect of the bloom out that's not your focus anymore. Your focus are, is your actual shot. But there's been, like, even not only the one that yet like was on there yesterday, but there's been a lot of fucking like sweaty fucking cunty nerds on the game, like a <laughs> lot. Yeah. Like getting it's only mad. Only gonna get worse. It's like, dude, shut the fuck up. But isn't league just as shut toxic from up. what you guys? Have said? League is way more toxic than this is right now. I said, like, like, give it a couple months. This will get toxic like that. Yeah. It's like to be fair, like. Counter Strike fucking community is pretty toxic itself because they're it's really? that mixed bag of like low level just people wanting to have fun and then hyper fucking tryhards and like they're they have this like um like elitist cunty like uh demeanor to them like when they're in comps and shit it's like all right dude we get it you're hung like just chill the fuck out <laughs> dude, fuck, trying to man. get them. yeah yeah that's spite. Yep, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that's me during sometimes, because that shit drives me insane. But it's yeah, but not you like you don't get hyper cunty about it though. No, like the, the the shit that pisses me off when we have like the rando that just want like it's fair if you don't know the game, but don't like instantly give up if you're just gonna like AFK second round and just fucking complain the entire time. Fucking leave like. Why are you going to make it worse for everybody else? Yeah, I mean, quit picking up the spike if you are going to fuck it up. Well, not so much that, guy. People are still playing. No, no, no. Consecutively. Like, that was that one game that we did play, but the guy just kept doing the same thing. Running the same route with the spike and just ended up really, really bad. It's like, guy, we're not saying don't play. We're saying you don't have to be the spike carrier in this series of rounds. Uh, Play a different angle. Try this. You know, stop picking up the goddamn spike. How are you getting into it first every time we spawn? What the fuck? Long arms. I don't know. I just, my final thought on Valorant for now being like a full, like what is it, like a week and a half or just over a week? Just over a week right now, probably. I just want to be good and I want to get wins. Like that's where I'm at right now. I have that bug. I've got that competitive bug with this where I'm like, there are some games I'm like, I know I'm better than that. You know, and you're like, I got to get that one in. I, I know I can do this. That's yeah, like it's very uh, exhilarating and, and refreshing for me. Especially like when you guys hear me, like I fucking get pissed, more pissed off about myself making a bad play than anybody else does. I just get like, I don't know, man. I get frustrated because it's like, I just, I remember, cause like I know how to peak angles somewhat, but I know like, like my FPS knowledge isn't as bad as I'm playing right now. Yeah. And it's, it's just like, it's fucked. I get, I'm just in my head a lot too. Like within, like it, when especially when I go like fucking zero and five, I'm just like fuck. Now I'm in a hole. Yeah, I don't know. I'm fucking hyped. I'm excited to see where this game goes. To be completely honest, like if if this many people are jumping on board for a beta, oh yeah, they only have three maps and so many characters. Just just fucking wait. To be fair, and it's Riot. I trust them on how they're gonna grow their game. It's like yeah. this isn't their first rodeo. It's the first FPS. But it's not their first rodeo into a competitive game. No. They had really good marketing. Right, I had. Oh, excuse me. They have, like, their marketing for this is, like, I feel like, because I don't want to, like, I don't want to, like, demean the game in saying this, but, like, had this game fucking sucked, their marketing, like, would have been called out because they're, like, the way that they're marketing the game as far as like doing 
uh like your famous your favorite streamer gets uh beta access and you have to watch them for a certain amount of time it's like that's a really dope um like marketing campaign because it's like you're not outside of that little gameplay trailer that we saw i didn't see very much um and this could just be me not looking that far deep into it but i really didn't see that much marketing outside of that initial release trailer of project a and then the other one where they were calling it valorant finally and i think a lot of this is people are excited about the game for different reasons like they're people are excited it's a new first person shooter that they get to play for me personally i was excited because it's riot making a new game for once 10 years of league of legends and they're finally dipping their feet into something else yeah fair so in regards to the way uh beta access is currently set up how do you guys feel about the people doing 24 7 drops I think it's uh, bullshit. streams i think I it's it. a cop out to be completely honest like I you're just like so dumb. i think you're trying to yeah like you're trying to be the fake cool guy yeah i'm not a fan of that like it's cool to give people drops yes it's shitty that you can just do like reruns of content to try to pull in more views and more fucking monetary gain like there was a I look on Twitch I think it was a few days ago and I went to the the Valorant tab just to see who was playing and there was a channel that had 123,000 people watching that was just reruns. Yeah. Like that ad revenue alone is fucking nuts. And like the the third most popular one had like 30,000 people watching and that was Myth. The two above them were just fucking rerun channels. I don't know, it's kind of weird. I don't know. Like, Cuz like I remember last week I said like Two things can be true, but like the more and more I think about it, it's like I get it to a certain extent, but like you're with the way that the current like key system is set up, they said that there's only a certain amount. So you're giving more than you're you're taking more than you're giving, if that makes sense. So you're taking in all this ad revenue and all these new followers, whatever, but you're only giving out this like five like, beta keys and shit per exactly. your stream or something. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, um, but then again, I don't even know because they were watching other streams as well. But two people stated that they got it when they were watching my stream. So, granted, it's not like they're holding this like fake, this fake or fallacy or whatever that you can get drops. Like you actually can get drops, but the percentage of that, especially for watching it all this time. Like that's not helping you anymore. They said like after you watch it for that like first two hour period, you're done. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like the streamers painting the picture that you need to watch it because there's not a lot of information as to how you 100% get the the access key. So what they're doing is they're just putting it there and kind of if somebody's not really privy to how it's working, they're gonna think, oh fuck, well let me just leave my phone on the whole night or my computer running. The whole night so that i can watch it and get a chance for it so, so you said you got it when you weren't watching one right right i ended up getting an email um it was way past like when i had already stopped watching it so i don't know if it so was just you like did, keyed so you up. were watching it at list yeah it was as well it was i was definitely watching someone the day before and then i had you know shut everything down and then i had ended up getting the email like at five in the morning when i wasn't up watching anybody and i didn't leave any tabs running uh with the stream up or anything so that could be just them scanning, like after all the bots were getting keys and whatnot. It could be them just verifying that they're actual people before. Like there could be people that are watching it and have access and not know it for a day or so while they like do like a background check type thing. So there was this, um, there were, I shared this article last week. Um, there was a, like one of the devs said that. They were going through and seeing like how many like pretty much how long your watch time was and they took like however many amount of the people that were on the top like whatever percentage that they decided and they just automatically or they they manually like sent them the codes or whatever so i'm thinking based on however long you watched it within like the first week it's possible like like I was saying, because like the way they made it seem was while you're watching, you can get drops. Um, I definitely wasn't watching anyone at the time when I got my drop. I mean, like I said, I, I think it's okay. I think it's cool that it gives smaller streamers an opportunity to have people want to come in 
and watch the stream and get some drops. But there should be some sort of like, I don't know, I don't want to say policing, but I guess keeping an eye on the whole 24 hour rerun streams because you're not live. Uh, but I would say there is no real way to check for that other than somebody manually going in and flagging it because you're live streaming under the game title, which are the only two prerequisites to count for the drop. And then yeah. all you're doing is streaming a media file. Like I, I, I get it because <laughs> it is giving out opportunities and I'm, I'm cool with that, but there is the piggyback aspect of it of, you know, like the personal gain. I don't know, like I'm not super miffed drop. by it, but I know there are a lot of people that are like super pissed off about it. It just seems lazy. Like have a... granted, there's going to be other people streaming. I think that might be the prime time for other people trying to find this key to also find a content creator that they enjoy. Mm-hmm. Doing this way just makes it kind of obnoxious in my eyes. But I think that most people will still end up where they're used to being uh if you watch a specific streamer you're gonna go watch it through them uh you probably have a couple of backup streamers already doing it and besides i think you're better off hanging out with those streamers sure i do see where the uh ad uh, revenue is going to come in if ads are running and stuff like that but you're not going to gain followers you're not going to gain subs you're not going to grow your community you're not going to do anything to get those people back other than piggyback off of you for a second until they get their key if they get one. Mm-hmm. Like I don't like the channels that are live and they put the they just like run reruns while they're live. I prefer the channels that say they're in Valorant, but they just have a rerun in the corner and they're doing something else. Like that way it feels more like they're just trying to help their community while still yeah. getting content out. Right, rather than right. just being like, oh fuck you guys or just take it. Yeah, because at least it, it doesn't tie the streamer down to uh, being committed to that one stream, you know, like or Valorant all the time, twenty four seven. If you want to play other stuffs, but if you have a chance to give something to your community, you know, you can have the smaller video clip of you playing. Yeah. That could be the size of like what your webcam would normally be, and you can play a different game or do a just chatting or there's something else. Speaking of video clips. I've been having so much fun making clips of this fucking game. I think so far we all have like a moment where we're like, holy shit, that was fucking awesome. And like, we'll either clip it or make a marker. Uh, I know mine personally was the one where me and Big were going up uh, Sea Long and he got dropped in Arches and I just put up the fucking cloud as uh, Omen and I blind fired through it and hit both those people. Oh, yes. I know what you're talking about. That oh, when I was talking that. about when I was like specifically it, stating this, this is, is why we why don't, you line don't up. stack. This is yeah, yeah. and I was like, hold, like I just put up the fucking smoke cloud and fired through it and dropped both of them. And I didn't, you oh. noticed it before I did, and oh. then I saw fucking, I saw the kill feed, and I, I, I didn't know I, I lost it. That shit was awesome. No, oh, it, it, that's <laughs> the the cool thing. It brings it back to like those golden days where you like made that crazy play in Halo or call uh COD. And you're like, holy shit, dude. Was back when you had to record shit with your, like, your phone. Oh, <laughs> nobody fucking misses those days. You don't miss those days for like the, the visual quality. You miss those days because those, that was a fucking magic play that you had. Yep. Just one clutch ass moment. Like, I, I get pissed some sometimes. Gems, dude. Even I'm like, well, I, we've all been there too. Where we'll start playing some godly fucking tier stuff, but stream is already done. And we were, we probably don't have Shadow uh, run play, uh, running in the background. Yeah. I think the favorite clip I have right now is when we all died to one grenade. <laughs> we'll end up on sad, a... dude. Yeah, we're yeah. going to be on a compilation somewhere. Yeah, that's the best part of it. Is you go, and, we're going to be on a compilation! Like, you're <laughs> super happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> we might be shit. The, That'd be awesome. That and the scary shotgun shot you did. Because it syncs up with my music super well. Oh, dude, I felt bad for that kid because I know he got jump scared really bad. Oh, yeah, dude. Like I said, I had to pee. And I'm like, if I was that guy, I would have peed. <laughs> but really quickly, I wanted to touch on the uh, the Travis Scott concert that he had on Fortnite. So he debuted a new song with uh, Kid Cudi um, it's called The Scots. I heard it's pretty good. Um, but what's like crazy is like he like. He is super opportunistic as far as like his marketing and it's super fucking dope. Cause like 
it seems like everything that he does, it sells out and he he's able to mark up prices on shit to sell it. Like he has um the the cactus jack, uh the Fortnite scar. He's selling it for like sixty five bucks. He has um the uh, Cactus Jack, the the little Fortnite character, the action figures, it's a duo set for seventy five bucks. He has Cactus like all themed shit for um like that concert that he had. It's all like ridiculously expensive, and like the majority of this shit is sold out. So it's like it's super cool how like especially in this time with uh with COVID nineteen uh pandemic pretty much stopping everything. It's cool that. Fortnite, even though I feel like it's it uses its platform to make money off of little kids, but it also gives like because I know you guys said Marshmallow did it and um, Travis Scott. It's cool that like they have that like juice to do something like of this caliber and it for it to be a success like this. I don't know. I think that that was like originally when they did it with Marshmallow is actually super cool. I don't know if you watched that entire thing. Uh, like, to be fair, it was like a complete music production in game. Like they had people, like players, actually come in. The thing was happening all the time. They can join in, and they literally just like bounce around the map. And they were flying around to the beat of the music with like different cinematics and shit going on. It was just overall like a cool experience for that. That's the the same thing with uh, Travis Scott and his. Uh... The music video for the song is all like in Fortnite. So like the his official video for the song is like the pretty much that like some of the event that went on, but I watched the whole event. It was pretty cool. Yeah, overall I think it's a it's a sick play. But I I don't know. Like like who else do you think's gonna do that shit, to be honest? Like, like, I'm do not you a think huge that fan might of- be picked up by like more people, more artists or Oh yeah. I really hope so, because that that's actually super dope. Not just to continue on as like something that's a unfortunate byproduct of what's going on at the moment, but just overall would be super dope. Well, Fortnite's think, always been on top of the like the in-game events thing. Like yeah. they they yeah. had an exclusive movie tie for um, uh, Star Wars. Yeah, constantly they they're doing uh, themes um, relevant to what's big in the media. Uh, you had the whole Thanos event. Um. Yeah, that's about all I know because I don't play Fortnite. They had fucking John Wick. Yeah, they had a uh, John Wick uh, skin for one I, of the seasons. I still got that character run up. I didn't even play that shit anymore, but it was still run up. I got John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Weird flex. I don't think uh, I could play that game to be honest. I used I to be it really once. into it, dude. Like, uh, I actually got that's the first solo battle royale that I got a win on. Yeah, I never got I into I just, the bit BR, but I was in the. I bought into the Save the World, uh, which is what Fortnite started as, and then that wasn't selling the way they thought it was, and then like overnight, uh, Fortnite came out. Oh, uh, the battle royale part for it. Yeah, I don't. I didn't even know about Save the World thing until like, um, I, I was watching a YouTube video on it. But I like I used to be really into Fortnite. Like I would play that shit every fucking day. But then I was just like, man, eh, I don't really, I don't really fuck with battle royales like that. I just lack the mental fortitude to try to build a fucking ten-story building. I mean, it's a very unique gameplay aspect. It's just it wasn't for me. Too much going on, man. Yeah, like yeah, I, 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 if I played the BR, like I'd be there with my fucking hard hat, trying to fucking figure out how I'm gonna build this masterpiece building, <laughs> while bullets are flying all over the place. It's just not for me. <laughs> He's like, fuck off! I'm trying to build. Stop a Stop shooting! <laughs> Oh I my think god, actually, you ruined my dining room. And my only win? I think I only built like one wall, so I got really fucking lucky on that shit. <laughs> Yo, if that's all it takes, it's all it takes, man. And then uh, Mario Maker is getting its final update. So, and, and the, which kind of sucks, like unless they're working on like a Mario Maker 3, but I don't really see them doing that because it's like the Mario Maker franchise, it's like you just build one and then it's like nonstop content from like a user user generated content. But in this new update, it's pretty cool. Like it wouldn't be really make a difference for me outside of giving a little cool experience to it. But for creators, um, it's allowing you to make pretty much a compilation of your the levels that you made, 
but you build them into a world like in super mario world where you have to finish one and then you go through like the entire world of that specific creator which i thought was pretty cool that's dope yeah it's actually pretty sick actually holy shit yeah that's pretty cool because like you rope somebody in with one of your levels and then there's like a continuation and you can start thinking this way of like making your maps in the future of progression yeah which i thought it's like it seems like they're that's their version of like i think that game is called dream on playstation mm-hmm. it's super dope like they're they're allowing like a game that's been out for what almost 30 years the original mario and it's just like it's the gift that keeps on giving pretty much because there's like people finding insane fucking like ways for you to be stuck on a level for 14 fucking days sometimes i've only dabbled in mario but fu- it's frustrating man there's it's, some of those uh, levels i'm like i can see what i have to do but i'm so bad at it especially when you get into the fucking kaizo maps where you have to you have to do like a spin on a certain part of an enemy so that it'll keep going in ascension throughout the the level that shit's like infuriating and like all all props to the people who make those levels man that's why i feel like they're they're truly works of art i feel like a dick when i'm like fuck this level because that was fucking stupid after like i'm pretty sure somebody spent like hours and hours working on it so like the the ones that I like, I'm really bad at. I always make sure I leave a like instead of like a dislike. It's like, yo, you got me, you little bitch. What well, is the thing? Think of it like a badge <laughs> of honor. Like if you if you're sitting there screaming, I hate this fucking level. This is fucking stupid. It's because it's difficult. Like it's not that you made it to the end in like ten seconds. Like that that level was ass. It was no challenge. It wasn't fun at all. So like maybe that's what they're looking for to really frustrate the shit out of you. And that's like the badge of honor. No, I do this to myself 100%. I only do the expert and super expert levels. It's like, every time I get into that game, I just like, I don't know. I'm like, yo, this shit's going to take me probably two days to finish. I'll give a fuck. Let's get it started on stream and get frustrated for two hours. <laughs> That's, uh, I think we could go to the conundrum. Yeah, I think oh, we yeah, could cover. No Borderlands? Yep. Oh, yeah, Borderlands. Mayhem no, 2.0 fucking wild dude i'm loving this right now it took us how long to get mayhem three to four and then now we're getting from mayhem four to ten and boy they did not pull no punches with ten not at all they're like you want a fucking harder game fine god damn it maybe that was like so remember many times we've talked about what the fuck is the point of nerfing a non-competitive game right so maybe this is their way of saying, you know what? We're not going to fuck with your builds as much anymore. But here is this biggest, thickest content. Try to get through um, Mayhem level 10 with your builds. It does really feel like like you guys like to see the big damage numbers and whatnot. Just have the most damage numbers, you know? And I'm sure in the updates to come, it's just going to get worse. Like, oh, it's going to get so big much Big was hitting shit earlier today for over a million. Yeah. I was hitting six mils today. Oof. And then we took that same gun to try to kill Mayhem level 10 um, Grave Warden. <laughs> yeah. Bro, it took like five fucking minutes. It's like, yeah, he's hitting for like six million, but the thing's got like a hundred million health. Yeah, yeah, Grave Warden looks at where you would normally shoot him, and then he just looks up at you like, what the fuck? That's it? There was one really annoying bug that I've already run into. So with h- how do we phrase this? So like with the Mayhem 2.0 shit, do you guys remember the skulls from Halo? Mm-hmm. Yes. That's what it really reminds me of. Like you can activate like all the weird shit, like the grunt birthday party. Right. The right. Heads, one shot kill. But yeah. yeah. Oh, my favorite. Really, really, like, it There's really a reroll uh, as well, which I think is pretty cool too. Oh, dude, it's actually super dope. But um, one bug that I found today, so Grave Warden, if he has the big head thing turned on, he'll actually shoot the all your loot through the wall so you can't pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that's, that's really funny. That's ass. All right. <laughs> like, it's a bug, but shit, it's also dude. a go fuck yourself for killing him. Yeah, dude, I was so it's his mad. Final, it his final like fuck seven you. Seven minutes to kill him by myself on Mayhem 10. And then he just fucking shot all this loot into the wall. I was like, well. 
And there's a bug right. right now. Now I'm sure it'll be fixed soon. Where the drop rates for legendaries is super low on Mayhem 10, but is like really high on Mayhem 6. Yeah, Mayhem 6 and 7 mm. has the same drop rate chance for the same legendaries as Mayhem 10. Yeah, that definitely sounds like a bug then. Because I know that there, there's like certain planets have a higher chance of dropping stuff at the moment. It was all part of the update. Uh, but yeah, no, if 6, 7, and 10 have the same drop rates and you're not seeing nearly as much as 10, something's not calculating correctly. No, the only reason they're for like the only reason I'm continuing to farm them on 10 because it's harder is because the overall stat increase isn't higher. So, mayhem level 10 weapon to mayhem level 6 is not the same. No, well, there was a you got a crack of toa that hits for 31,000. Uh, let me grab it. Hold on, fuck is it? Yeah, this thing is insane. And some of the anointed, the new anointed stuff, they're so strong. And from I'm a fan of speedrunning, and I think like the the skull system, like you were saying, is gonna hu- add a huge factor into speedrunning. People are like, all right, we're gonna speedrun Mayhem 10, three hour playthrough. And like, fucking what? Yeah, right. then when you start getting Champ. those deaf skulls to start fucking following you and shit, those are Dude, funny, man. It's so much fun though. It, yes. it adds a weird sense of panic. It does. It really oh, man. does. Play my Armada, especially when you get slowed. Well, you don't get slowed, fucker. <laughs> He's like, just oh, turn around no. and look at the skull. Like, come on, hurry up, catch up. Yeah, so I got a mayhem level eight Krakatoa with thirty two k base damage. Does it tell you what mayhem you got the weapon on? No, I just remember. So it's still gonna drop level fifty seven. Uh, is there like a more chances to get anointed or like what's the real like? Are you gonna get any gear that is uh, specific to the mayhem levels out of it? Yeah, so Mayhem level 6 and up opens up new legendaries for different bosses. Mm. Like base game bosses. So they're giving you a reason to get better one at the game and also try to re-roll on new shit. Oh, okay. So like I'm about to, like when this is over, I'm about to farm a bit of Kilovolt because he has a SMG that's like the dictator, but it shoots two rows of bullets. Like I need that for my Moe's. So there's updated versions of the older stuff then? Essentially. Cool. I don't know. I'm I'm super hyped about this. Like I, I really wanted this to come out. I've been hyping this up to myself for the past couple weeks. We gotta get a mayhem, uh, a mayhem ten Maggie for big. Dude, the shitty part is, is like I can't use those weapons anymore right now. Oh, they just don't fall in line with the uh, build. It's not that they don't fall in line with the build. It's more so like now you really have to play around what modifiers you have on that mayhem level. Oh yeah. Ah. Uh, One of which is. You do more damage, but your recoil is like 30 <laughs> times fucking worse. And for yes. that one, I don't mind because I use a lot of Hyperion stuff on my Moe's. Yeah, I mind because I use fucking Jacob's weapons. Yeah. One shot does makes me do wow, like fucking, fucking look straight up. Yeah. I'm flipping the planet upside down. <laughs> <laughs> and I do like how some of the skulls are fun. Like the, the crit one where it, instead of just making you do more crit damage, like here, everything has a gigantic head. Up until like, you fight Grey Ford and he shoots your shit through the fucking wall. Like they added, like kept, they kept the sense of humor with their update. And I like that. I don't know. I'm I'm hyped about this entire thing, dude. Like this is so much fun. And like I didn't even know this update was coming. Like I was bored. I'm like I'll play a little Borderlands. And I was like update. And I'm like what the fuck did they update? And it's huge. It almost feels I wouldn't say like a new game, but it's like almost feels a like a small DLC buff. You know? It feels like there's so much more to do right now. Yeah. Especially with the new raid. I haven't tried they the new make, raid yet. They what didn't make it so like, oh, you can just keep spamming the raid. Like when you do the first level of the raid, like say you go through it, now you have to go back and collect all the fragments again, and then you can go back. Yeah. It's it's a lot better than the, the first time with going to, what was it, Heck? The Heck one was cool, but like I, I didn't like that it, it was, was time short. because, yeah, it was short, yeah. but it'd be nice to know if you can go back whenever the hell you want, but you can't because it was just an October event. I didn't play that one. I was Maurice, man. Is that where he came from? Yeah. Yeah. I just started playing and he was there. <laughs> and this is the first Borderlands I've put a whole lot of time into. Because most of them, I'm like, I played through the story. I never I got a, a, a character max level and got to the point where I'm farming legendaries. I never got to that in the Borderlands 2. I was like, I just had fun. I you agree. Know? Like, I would, I beat the story and then like, we tried again in Vault Hunter mode 
then disappeared. And then when we would come back, we'd start all over again from scratch. So never got this far into the game, to any of the games, and then this invested. And to be fair, it felt like they've really built up to this. Like Borderlands 1, there was the true fault under mode. And I'm like, I didn't even fucking deal with that. I'm like, I finished the game. And then Borderlands 2, I'm like, I did it a little bit and played a lot of the DLCs a couple of times. Pre-sequel doesn't totally matter. And then this one, I'm like, this is, to me, this is what I've wanted out of a Borderlands game since the first one. I'm just upset there's no extra characters because according to them, it's kind of like just doesn't fall in line with the story. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I feel that's kind of bullshit because your other games had DLC characters. All of them did. Yeah. Even to the point where they were featured in stories, the main stories and the DLC stories in this game. Uh, like Gage. Gage was a DLC character for Borderlands yep. 2. So, like, why all of a sudden are you making it seem like uh, DLC characters are not conducive to what you guys are doing? And Just kill fucking- off Ava and then make it give us a new character. Absolutely. No one's going to be upset. Like, motherfucker, fucking uh, Hammerlock's sister was a playable character. Yeah. And she was a boss in this fucking game. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not very invested into Borderlands, but I, I agree. We could kill Ava and get a new character. <laughs> Dude, I, I don't know. Oh, I have... Make Ava a playable character. Or like a Ugh. digital, like I do with Jack. Oh, yeah. she would be like Claptrap in pre-sequel. Yeah. Well, because she's the new Siren. So, uh, I don't know, man. Fuck her. Maya but she's learning. Her. Fuck her. Dude, I don't know. I have a couple thousand hours on Borderlands, like, overall. So... <laughs> I play the shit out of this game. It's so fun. All right. That's, that pretty much wraps up all the news and everything we had. What's uh, what's your conundrum, guy? All right. Like, what's the worst bad guy? And I mean that in what's the like the most evil bad guy or who was just fucking awful at being a bad guy? The shittiest bad guy and like the yes. most evil bad guy. All right. Yeah. All right. Like, so the shitty. What's the range on this? Like just in. So. For me, the most evil bad guy, Corella DeVille. She literally wanted to skin puppies for a coat. Yeah, I'm with you on this. <laughs> that was literally where I was going. And All right. for the for the worst, like he's bad at being a bad guy, is Dr. Eggman from Sonic. This Dude, are we the same fucking person? Bro, probably. Every game he collects all of the Chaos Emeralds and then loses. Dude. How do you get the Infinity Gauntlet maxed out and then lose? Dude. Dude, I was about to say the same shit. <laughs> I was going to go way different with this. <laughs> what you got? I was going to say Dr. Evil is the worst villain. I, I kind of agree with that. He didn't do a very good job. He didn't do shit. But, and then I was also going to say Bowser is the worst. Villain. I thought about Bowser. It's like you have uh, Princess Peach and they, or and back in the day you had Princess Daisy Nobody knows what happened to Daisy, but you kept on losing Daisy. Then they brought in Peach, and it's like every game you get your ass whooped. And can I add to that that Mario is the worst hero in that sense too? Yeah, he, he keeps, keeps losing. losing. Like, yo, just, fucking princess. Just find another princess, bro. Yeah, but she's a fucking adult. Like, why the hell do you have to keep an eye on her twenty four seven? I think that's what makes Bar- Bowser's kind of like in both boats, isn't he? Yeah, that's just. He's not very fun. good at being a bad guy. Like he's getting his ass kicked by a, a tiny plumber, and then spoiler, it's a fucking dragon. Spoiler, I, if I'm not mistaken. In Mario Odyssey, you have to team up with Bowser so that you both can save yourself, so you don't die in like the last level. What a stupid plot twist! The most evil? I don't know. Ugh. I think the most evil has got to be fucking Corilla, man. I mean, there's a book that I've been reading. That he kind of puts up a good argument because he's like evil just to be evil. Like one of the quotes in the book is that if he like every time he learns about something or he sees something new, he writes it down like notes about it and then he destroys it because he says anything that has existed without him knowing didn't have his permission to exist at all. Hmm. I'm like that dude. He's a dick. Like there was a scene in the in the book where like he's in a church and he's just like. That guy's like a rapist. And they're like, what the fuck? And then everyone believes him and they kill him. And they're like, how'd you know that guy did that? And he's like, I didn't know who he was. And then they're all like, oh, yeah, this guy's awesome. And then they follow him. Like, he's evil just to be evil. But Corilla wanted to skin puppies for a coat. Yep, takes a cake there. 
I think so. Like the worst, worst at being a bad guy would have to be the fucking uh, Calypso twins as well. Yeah, they're not very good. They like they had everything to win, and instead of just doing like a two v one fucking boss fight, they went and fought each other and fucking lost everything. Like Bro, a this, that was uh, my brother's biggest complaint about this game. Is what about Majin he... Buu? Also well, true. True. Bad as in like not good at it, or as in like really, really assholeish. Really ha- assholeish. I mean, he. Like, as Dragon Ball Z continued on, though, he's become, like, a, a core character as a part of the good guys. Borderlands 3 should have ended when Tyreen took Firehawk's ability. Like, all she had to do was, like, <laughs> pop a cap in it right there, game over, roll credits. <laughs> well, yeah, she was about to fucking kill her, and then, like, Troy got a hard-on for her and was like, give me my powers, leave me alone. And, and it's like, oh, just have your bandits do it. And be like, it's fucking end. You could end it right there. Yeah, and that then, was my... Yeah. My complaint. I thought they were gonna go the complete opposite way with the boss fights, and it was just gonna be like the Calypso twins versus you, not the. Oh, we're gonna have an inner struggle and fucking two different wars. Now it's a one v one v one. Okay, you already took Maya. Are you gonna take away everything else? <laughs> yeah, man, they took away Maya to make room for the greatest fucking character ever in the series, Ava. Dude, Ava's worst claptrap. Agreed. And I don't Dude, like Clap Claptrap. Trap. Claptrap is the GOAT. Claptrap is the reason why I play Borderlands. Claptrap was a hilarious character to play in pre-sequel, dude. Yeah. His, uh, his ability used to just be random. The, r- the random disco ball? Oh, yeah. man. Yo, did you know that's the character they speedrun with? Yeah. So how, how deep do you have to be into pre-sequel? Or is he like at the beginning of it that you can pick him? Uh, he's the, the character. Yeah, he's you can just pick Claptrap. Yeah, you can just pick Claptrap to play as to I level. I might play that. It's actually really funny. It's really funny. And that's like one of the shorter ones, right? Uh, uh, yeah, because yeah. they didn't add a whole lot for the DLC because uh, 2K Australia went under. And uh, main 2K studios didn't pick up the game and continue delivering on DLC or anything. Is it multiplayer? Would you guys be down to play that after you're done with like... I have it on out? PC. I have it as well, but it's on Steam. And, uh, yeah. yeah. I think mine's on Steam. I'd go through it again. I'd play someone I haven't played. Hell, let's get to the point where we're just gonna like pitch in and buy fucking big a new hard drive only for Steam and see if that fixes the problem. Bro, I don't even want to fucking fix this <laughs> problem. Do anymore. Anymore. Like, I don't want to touch it. I don't care anymore. <laughs> like I've already clean installed Windows, but Steam like if there's anyone in chat that or fucking comments or anything. Like, hook me up, dude. Like, I've clean installed Windows. I've done everything. And the problem just is, still acting like a piece of anytime shit. he installs Steam or runs games from it, it's running on a timer and the shit shuts down. He's done clean installs and everything. We're out of fucking ideas. Like, I, it's not a corrupted drive because everything else fucking works just fine. Like, it doesn't make any fucking sense. It's some weird fucking hard, um, hardware piece that you have that's going under all the radars as not compatible with some software. Something stupid's happening. Watch it be like my Yeti. It's just like, nope, we don't like them. Mm-mm, nothing from blue. <laughs> and there, I'll say that for later. All I right. realized I realized it was a stupid comment. Oh, cool. So I think that wraps it up for this week's episode of the Other Controller Podcast. We do appreciate you guys hanging out. If you're watching us on YouTube, please do hit that follow button as well as the bell so that you're notified every time we release a new podcast or brown corn dog steady we are the other controller podcast have a wonderful week